Hello again. The mathematics taught in British schools is exclusively of European origin. There is some evidence that other cultures, in India and China for instance, worked on methods similar, say, in principle to calculus. But the only coherent and universal system of calculus is that devised by Newton and Leibniz. Nevertheless, the search continues for contributions made in the field by sub-Saharan Africans, Red Indians or Australian Aborigines. None of these efforts have so far been crowned with success, though. A few years ago, it was claimed that Aborigines had actually invented the aeroplane, or at least the theory of aerodynamics, which enables uh, aeroplanes to fly. This was based upon the fact that boomerangs have an aerofoil shape, and this was felt to indicate a sophisticated knowledge of mathematics. Few people were convinced by this, but now a professor of mathematics at the Australian National University is leading a research and teaching initiative called Mathematics Without Borders, and it's aimed at broadening and diversifying the cultural base and content of mathematics taught at the university. Sounds exciting, no? Professor Rowena Ball says that mathematics has been gatekept by the West and defined to exclude entire cultures. She goes on to explain, Indigenous and First Nations people around the world are standing up and saying, our knowledge is just as good as anybody else's. Why can't we teach it to our children in our schools and in our own way? Well, what you may be tempted to ask is this mathematical knowledge. Is it calculus? Set theory? Algebra? Binary arithmetic? All of these would, of course, be tricky things to accomplish for a society which could not read or write. But Professor Ball has the perfect example of this indigenous mathematical knowledge. It is smoke signals. She says that one interesting example that we are currently investigating is the use of chiral symmetry to engineer a long distance smoke signaling technology in real time. And I'm not actually not making this up in the description to this video. I give a link to a piece from the Australian National University in which viewers can check all this for themselves. Yes, it's true. Professor of Mathematics there really is talking about long distance smoke signaling technology in real time. I'm not at all sure what the advantages might be of a long distance smoke signaling technology in real time. I seriously doubt it would prove more useful than the telephone, for example. I'm not even sure that I would describe smoke signalling as a technology at all, if it comes to that, but Professor Ball is quite excited about it. As far as I'm able to understand it, she thinks that this could be, or could have been, useful in weather forecasting. She ends by saying that, my aim is to grow a cohort of indigenous students in mathematics through research on indigenous mathematical knowledge and its development in a modern global context. If our work can achieve that, nothing would make me happier for the students to then take over and continue to move it forward. You'll notice a number of popular buzzwords there about moving things forward at a global context. I'm not at all sure how um, smoke signalling would tie in with a modern global context, but there we are. It's not difficult to explain why this is really a lot of fashionable nonsense. We need only consider the Neanderthals. Does anybody seriously think that the Neanderthals had highly developed mathematical knowledge from which we might learn today in a global context? And yet the evidence is just as strong uh, for the Neanderthals as it is for the Australian Aborigines. In 2020, the discovery of a small piece of string made from the inner fibres of tree bark was reported from an archaeological site in France. 
The implications of this were immense because the fragment predated the arrival of modern humans in Europe. In other words, the string had been made by Neanderthals. Most vegetable matter from 40,000 years ago simply rots away, but by a miracle this little bit of three-ply string had somehow survived. String implies the existence of rope, bags, nets and many other artefacts which we usually associate more with Homo sapiens. It suggests too mathematical understanding of concepts such as pairs and sets. Making string from fibres is a tricky process which requires a good deal of practice. Does this really mean that we can learn mathematics from the Neanderthals or that they could have taught us anything about the subject? I think personally that the idea of learning anything useful about mathematics from looking at um, a piece of Neanderthal string are about as slender as being able to learn anything useful from examining Aborigine smoke signals. I think this is all complete nonsense.